Hello everybody, it's Decentralized Day with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. And it's podcast time, our weekly podcast where we update you on everything and also we choose one topic for every podcast. But we usually start with updates and uh, Curtis, you always start, so go on. Uh, yeah, sure. So we're at 21,300. Um, if you look at the 200 week moving average, mm-hmm. that might be a useful just little update. Yeah. There we've you go. Hit it. Yeah, so we, we're, we've hit it as resistance uh, rather than support. So the 200 week average is about, uh, sorry, the 200 week mi- moving average is at about 22,300 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we hit it at about 22 and then we pulled back. So it's, it's, it's providing uh, resistance, unfortunately. Um, yeah. What else is new? Um, it seems like a lot of the panic selling, most of it is over, but not all of it. Uh, maybe more to come this week. I guess if we had another mm-hmm. exchange blow up or like uh, the Mt. Gox coins started selling or GBTC problem, um, you might see another sell off. I have to interrupt you because you said another exchange. So which exchange blew up? Already? I guess the, ex- well, okay, let's call them platforms. Yeah, that's better. So we, wh- wh- where do we have it now? We've got Celsius, Block Five. But Celsius did pay its Bitcoin debt free, yeah. actually. Yeah. So they yeah. might not get bankrupt after all. I guess so, but um, it seems to me that they've lost their reputation. Oh, yes, um, sure. So people will be, I think there'll be a run as well, uh, sooner or later. Um, people will just pull off um, mm. and, and move elsewhere. Um, but it lo- it looks like people might not lose all their money that they have. That's good news. In- that's great news. And that's like, like unexpected, actually. That's a, like all of us already thought that, you know, it's all over for all of those unfortunate people that had the True. deposits. True. So yeah, so Voyager possible. might be worse. Hey, Voyager, Voyager did Chapter yeah. 11 bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. Um, chapter 11 bankruptcy is is a little bit better than like Chapter 7 is where you're just out and you've closed. Uh, chapter 11 bankruptcy allows you to continue operations uh, to try and recover the business. Uh-huh. Um, okay. The problem is that 90% of Chapter 11 bankruptcies end up turning into Chapter 7. So only 10% of the time is there an actual recovery from a chapter 11 bankruptcy so it looks like voyager might be a worse situation than celsius um so could be yeah but i interrupted you in the middle of the updates so uh we're gonna probably we, you know i have no idea but the, the one thing to look for would be <laughs> good. uh it'll grind along right it'll grind along at this level for maybe a couple months and then there might be one more capitulation and then we go higher um a lot of people are saying now the sentiment is too bearish and in the short term that might be true but i think people will lose patience especially anyone who's sort of new to the market and still holding on to their bitcoin might lose patience in the next couple of weeks or months if the price doesn't go up so if we kind of uh sort of grind along around twenty thousand people there might be some people that give up and say this is a waste of time then there's a final capitulation and then we go higher. That's what happened in 2018. So patience um, would be advised. Fair enough. Now, uh, S&P 500, do you want to say anything to this? Yeah, there was a rally last week. Um, almost every day was green, I think, last week. is That's daily, right? That's daily. Um, yeah, we had, we had five days of green. So it was, and it finished on a green note. Um, and it was the no, Fed meeting. It, it, yeah, but the Fed notes were from two weeks before, and they weren't that great. So um, now the U.S. job report came out. There was 372,000 new jobs created in June. That was a surprise okay. to the upside, and it shows that the economy is fairly resilient. Um, that doesn't mean the second half of the year will be good, but um, it was sort of a surprise that might have helped. Um and uh, there's some important, so QT, uh, quarter two earnings are coming out very soon. Um, and then the Fed, then the inflation rate for June will come out. So there's some really important data coming soon. Maybe now, maybe now let me talk about Bitcoin and about S&P 500. And then we'll have, we'll, we are going to have a look at other updates as well today because it's interesting. So let me start with Bitcoin. 
as Curtis has just mentioned, the 200 weekly average has become resistance. Although uh, I like to look at the total current market cap because I'd like to believe that even though Bitcoin is still the king, uh, crypto is not about Bitcoin or just about Bitcoin anymore. So when you look at the total current market cap, you actually uh, realize that the 200 moving average has became has become support and on weekly even more so on weekly it's actually a perfect close uh, the last week on the 200 moving average. As for the leverage, I don't have that chart opened for the, the, the shorting and over leveraging indicator, but nothing changed that much. There was a little bit of the shorting. Perhaps I should open uh, Binance uh, funding fees. I have a good experience when I'm uh, looking at the Binance's funding fees, even though I admit it's not the only exchange, of course. But um, yeah, yeah, over the past days, there was just not really that much of the initiative funding. Yeah, I don't think we are going over 23k at the moment. Uh, that's that I'm still saying the same. I have to mention one of our viewers, W Y E uh, U. Uh, wrote me two very valuable, I think, comments. One of them was that you were listening to influencers several hours a day nowadays and that he doesn't believe they are in denial, that he sees that they many have turned sharply bearish. He wrote me this six days ago. Right. And this could actually be true. I wrote you back. Uh, I wrote you back. You haven't uh, responded. So... I would right. be happy to hear more from you, W Y E. Like this is exactly the value of community, and I'd love to to build bigger community than you know the both parties. It is a very mutually, I think, beneficial relationship. And You're if right. this is true, if the influencers are not in denial, and I admit that it could be true, that it might be just my perspective that they are because some of them that I'm eyeing, they still are in denial, in stubborn denial. But if that's true, I even wrote you that we might hold 16.2K and I mean it. So uh, that would be also uh, an option for me. Um, on daily, there is a disgusting ascending wedge forming. It's not going a on what? for long. Is a, a what? Ascending wedge? Ascending wedge. A disgusting one? <laughs> well... All ascending wedges are disgusting because they always break down. <laughs> I didn't they know all, that. They yeah. always break down. This is instead it's a it's a trading artifact. It's because of the bot programming. I saw even more disgusting ascending wedge back in <laughs> April, I think, on weekly. And I saw this one here. You it should uh, just... patent that. You should get a, a patent on that quote, that disgusting uh, ascending wedges. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's already patented. But anyway, <laughs> uh, by somebody. But anyway, uh, if you remember on the podcast in the like April, I was saying that this is very disgusting and it's going to break down and it <laughs> did break down. And But it, I thought it was going to break down only to 30K, but it broke down all the way to 20. Right. So uh, this is not on weekly, fortunately. So this might not go to like really, really like down. But I do think this, uh, the bottom of Curtis the Oracle, because the Curtis the Oracle call is bottom <laughs> here. But I don't think that this bottom is going to unfortunately uh, last. That would be perhaps my take. The S&P 500, my, my line, my not even my first line was hit. I have few lines here. The first line I have here for like half year. The second line I added recently, uh, not even the first one was hit. And maybe the second one, the bear, bear, bear scenario. Let's not talk about it. Like it's, it's, it's pointless to talk about it today. Uh, okay, Curtis, we have to update uh, as well DXY and right. hold because it's interesting. So go on for the DXY. Yeah, so DXY is really breaking out. 106, it hit 107. There's a theory I'd like to talk about in a couple of weeks called the it's called the dollar milkshake theory by a guy named Brett Johnson. And he's been talking about this for a few years, but basically that U.S. dollar strength will create more U.S. dollar strength and it becomes like a vortex where smaller currencies will collapse or become sort of un, very, very unattractive and it creates a, a sort of momentum for the U.S. dollar to go higher and higher. I think it's surprising a lot of people how strong the U.S. dollar is getting. I have one more resistance line here. 
uh, these lines, the first line and the second line, which is the fast line. It would be, I think, disastrous if it gets and encloses like daily, uh, uh, weekly or monthly above the fault line. That would be, I think, a disaster. I really hope this is not going to happen. These lines are part of my theory that uh, the US dollar that the US dollar is macro bearish on the uh, even DXY, and that uh, once it retests this fault line that it's going to reject and start rejecting and it's going to be and it's never going to well you should never say never but it's part of my theory that this is going to be like uh, uh like as high as we are going to go so i guess you just need to have a theory of why that would reverse w one obvious reason it would reverse is uh uh the us government intervening with with g7 g20 nations and, and realizing that it's going to really negatively affect the global economy and and trade balances and last but not least we have to update you on gold because something interesting is happening with gold at the moment um perhaps i would like to start with this and i i want to self-criticize myself that this might be a poor call of me uh, self-criticizing is something that the influencers don't usually do they uh, most of the time they only come back to their good calls so my call was the buy at 1831 we've already closed way below this and we are closing weekly even below even below this swing here right so uh i think that there is a reasonable chance my call is poor and wrong my gold uh, and when i look at monthly and when i look from the different perspective i actually wow i mean I, why didn't i see this before actually it is starting to make sense um like it looks like the double bottom or like just like it happened in 2011 when we had a new all-time high on gold and then we retested it like a year later now we had a new all-time high in 2020 for gold and we right. retested it like two years later but the yeah. structure seems like disgustingly similar and it right. actually makes even sense that actually my call perhaps should have been a bearish one and my call should have been around 1400 gold the next so perhaps that would be the second right. call that i would make as a replacement for my probably poor call that I've made. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, so I guess if you're going to call higher gold prices, you have correctly to be correct with a higher gold price call. You kind of have to get the U.S. dollar prediction right because of oh, course. Oh. So what, and what that, you're seeing here, David, true. is the U.S. dollar is strong, right? So um, I'll, I'll make you feel good. Put uh, gold in Japanese yen, and I'll show you what the gold <laughs> price is. Okay. Yeah. Um... So that's in yen, two hundred thirty-seven thousand yen. So um, look at look at since 2007, look, that's almost getting parabolic. Really, actually, both gold and the US dollar are getting strong. Yes, but the gold uh, but but it the, doesn't show in this chart. Yeah, but the US yeah. dollar is getting stronger and it probably is going to continue a little bit more. Right. So perhaps this should be my call, perhaps. And perhaps even Mark the Mezzo's short the last year was just mistimed. He was shorting gold, Mark the Mezzo. Right. So you have right. to get the US dollar call right if you're going to get gold right. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Or else you trade it versus other currencies. Yeah. Maybe start with the video. Do you want to play 30 seconds of the video? Sure, let's go. Let's For fun, go. Uh, there we go. Let's have a little bit of the YouTube. Because you're all familiar with the platform. Okay, this might be this might be disturbing, guys. So a revolution is what I can so see. So Sri Lanka is blowing up. Not a velvet um, revolution for sure. I think two two days ago they stormed the uh, embassy or the 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 parliament, and they're on the verge of uh, financial collapse. So there's protests, there's food shortages, there's massive inflation. The currency is crashing. The Sri Lankan rupee, uh, food shortages. And they're trying, I think they're, they're trying to get the government to resign or they've resigned already. Yeah, I think a revolution is what expects the whole world this decade. Right. So let's go to the little uh, 
page I prepared just to explain some of this for your viewers. Okay. So first of all, you just wanted to show where Sri Lanka is. So Sri Lanka sure. is just south east of India. Yeah, uh, it's an island. island here. And yeah. now do you want to go to the to the document? Well, this yeah, this here is the currency. We'll talk about that drops. You see the, the currency has mm. been weakening. Um, basically died quite yeah. a while. But look at the end there. It just fell off a cliff. So we're trying to relate global events, uh, geopolitics with uh, legacy financial markets and of course cryptocurrency, how they all relate. I think that's uh, uh, something we're bringing in this channel. Sri Lanka is located off the southern east coast of India. It's about 21 million people. Um, not a rich country, but they do export a lot, uh, textiles, clothing, and tea. Um, they do have lots of natural resources, but they don't produce um, high value goods so much. Um, they're best known, they've had a war from 1983 to 2009. The Tamil Tigers were a revolutionary group that tried to, I guess, overthrow the government. Uh, they were crushed at the end of 2009 and, and the war ended. Mm -hmm. um, after that, tourism opened up. Sri Lanka is a very beautiful country, um, very popular for tourists, and they've had a very healthy tourism trade uh, mm -hmm. from 2009 to 2018, which brings in a lot of US dollars and a lot of wealth. Yeah. Um, that said, they were still running a trade deficit. So point number four, they still had to import oil and food, right? Um, so they were exporting clothing and tea and uh, selling tourism for US dollars, but in exchange, they had to bring in oil and food um, and they were ru uh, running a trade deficit. And of course, to fund a trade deficit, you have to use US dollars typically, right? You have to pay your debts in US dollars. If you're a smaller country, you can't use the rupee uh, for many reasons. Uh, so they need the US dollar. Um, number six, on Eastern Sunday, 2019, there was some massive terror, terror attacks Mm -hmm. terrorist attacks that damaged their tourism industry. Um, it started to affect the, the, the country slowly. Um, they could no longer pay for imports. So um, they started to basically burning, burning their reserve currency, US dollar holdings. Okay. Um, the prime minister Gota started to slash taxes and print money. I don't know if this sounds familiar, but this is what the US does. This is what Japan does money printing to solve problems. Uh, bigger countries like the US can do this. Uh, mm -hmm. Smaller countries uh, do it at their peril. It's very dangerous. Um, so number nine, tourism dollars started disappearing and their foreign reserves of US dollars, they fell. In two years, they fell from 9.2 billion to 50 million US dollars. So they got wiped out in two years. Wow. Um, the Sri Lankan rupee crashed. Um, they then defaulted on 6.6 .6 billion of foreign debt. So they had promised to pay back other countries uh, mm -hmm. and the World Bank would have been one of those lenders. They defaulted and said, sorry, we can't pay you back. Um, another big thing was the 2020 COVID. Obviously that stopped global tourism, which hurt their, their stream of income uh, and the hope of a quick recovery. The currency fell again. And then the yeah. final blow, point 14, is when Russia invaded the Ukraine. You saw, because there was Western sanctions uh, blocking trade, you saw oil and wheat prices spike. And those were huge imports for Sri Lanka, OK? So they're losing their tourist dollars. And the meanwhile, prices are going up. Yeah. So they're wiped out. Sri Lanka's wiped out. They're bankrupt. Um, Food and energy prices keep spiking. And then finally, the rupee lost 30% of its value in just a few days. So if you go back to that exchange chart, can you flip back to that? Mm -hmm. You'll show what happens at the far right. Um, you'll see that it goes off a yep. cliff. Mm -hmm. So um, once they default on their, their debts um, and they say, we can't pay you back, um, the world loses confidence in their currency, right? And the government. And so once, uh, similar to Celsius or BlockFi or these other platforms, once once confidence is, is damaged, you never get it back. And so look what happened. So, so you have this horrible storm of rising oil prices and a falling currency, no tourist dollars. And you can see how fast this happens. We started having riots. 
And then two days ago, they stormed Parliament. And you can see from the video that the, the, the government's basically out now. Yeah. Okay, so why is this important? Um, it's obviously horrible for Sri Lanka, but um, I'm trying to indicate here how important the currency is to world events, right? Uh, when people talk about geopolitics, they often are not educated in economics or the simple idea of what is a currency, how does it keep its value, and how critical that is to keep uh, a country functioning. I mean, Sri Lanka had a war for many years, and yet they they did not overthrow their government. Yeah. What overthrew their government was their currency collapsing, because uh, you know, you'd think a war would, would be worse, right? But people could still work, they could still pay for food. Now you have people starving to death. And so the currency is the last thing that goes before the government goes. And then the other thing is to think, well, it's probably not going to happen in Canada or Australia or the US in the next few years, but it could be coming to Europe. It could be coming to these other countries. Um, you, the US dollar will be the last country to fail for various reasons. Uh, but something like the euro could have an attack on its currency. The Japanese yen is down 19% already. Uh, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar, Great British pound, all of these are relatively strong and yet very vulnerable. And so look what could happen. Um, I'm not predicting that in the short term, but... Uh, um, well, it's safe to say that the whole financial system is going to end up like this. And with the US, yeah, at the moment, like you said, it looks like they are the last in line, but, you know, things also change. An unexpected event a shuffle. Right. Shuffle and they the happen world. quickly too. Look how fast, even Sri Lanka, right? They stuck mm -hmm. it out for a very long time. They had a war for 17 years, right? But they tolerated it. And now in the, the entire country collapses in a year over their currency. I would say that this whole, this decade, the whole financial system is going to end up like this. And I don't think the CBDCs are the next step forward. I don't think, I think CBDCs are going to be just a different form of the same evil. Um, right. So We could jump into sentiment. Do you want to look at our sentiment chart? The one you had was better, I think. Yeah, we talked last time, um, whether we were in denial or panic or capitulation, I think you and I agreed we were somewhere in that range of maybe you were emphasizing denial and I was closer to panic. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we're at capitulation yet. Issue, yeah, I would say if anyone's thinking how to play this, this bear market, it would be to be patient. I notice, I think yes. like the traders want, you know, the YouTubers want to have a quick bull run again because that's how they drive their channels right yes so there and also people are not interested in a boring winter of six to 12 months that's really boring right and it's not yeah. exciting at all so you're going to see the youtubers calling for a, a bull like a v-shaped bounce and you're going to see the traders also wanting that the ones that want to go long or want to kind of they're basically impatient right yes um, and, and they're not going to come they're... back to their poor calls once their problem falls. They're not going to come back like six months from now so telling you that, you know, I've been dead wrong here. But they will always come back, tell you that I was right in May last year. Right. I was I told you that we were going, yeah. you know, I was right here. So uh, anyway, if, anyway, continue, please. If you want to look at 2018, that, go back on the, okay. the Bitcoin yes, yes. chart. There you go. Uh, okay. Let's look at it and we'll learn from that because it is seeming to map that. So we had the peak at 19.5 at the end of, I think, December 2017. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it looks very familiar with what we've been having now, which is these, these sort of staircase down sell-offs, right? Yeah. Uh, what you've got there is that 6,000 level I was talking about where it lasted. How long was the 6,000 level kind of held well, as support? It was first hit in February 2018. It was yeah. held for like uh, nine months. Okay. Where did it... Uh, so, right, it, was it June that it kind of started? Hit, uh, yeah, yes. right there. Yeah, that's the period I'm... So, June till when? It was half year then. Yeah, June to 140 November. days okay. to November. And then, yeah, so I think you're going to have a market that's a lot of, a bunch of impatient 
um, young people, to be honest, in the market. And you'll see they may lose patience after six months and be surprised that after six months, it will go down and not up. Does that make sense? It does. You know, it they'll say, oh, it's been sitting at 20,000 for six months. So that's the bottom. That's the bottom. That's the bottom. And the market will surprise to the down rather than the up. That could happen. Very mm -hmm. likely that could happen. Yeah. So um, and then the recovery for when it crashed, it took how long to get back above 6,000? Another three months. Right. From uh, yeah. Yeah. 133 days. OK, so. So total, we're looking at nine months there? Yes, approximately, yes. So that is one scenario that could play out that people think 20K is the bottom because we grind along and the head fake will be to go higher. It'll actually sell off to 15 or something and then go higher. I don't think people are, are, are patient enough to wait. Yeah, and I so also don't think people are prepared. Yes, I agree that at the moment yeah. people are generally not prepared for this. But at the moment it's a little bit perhaps too soon to call all this because we don't yet know. At the moment, um, I think the most important is to 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 talk about you know what's what's likely this month and as we've just uh, discussed today, what is likely is that there is going to be some kind of a retest of the bot. Remember that uh, technical charts will have price pattern, but they also get solved in terms of length of time, right? So rather than having a bottom formed by a double bottom, it can be formed by a single touch of the bottom and then time basically that, that sort of clears buyers and sellers. That's another way to solve a chart prediction, if that makes sense, is using time, being patient, you know, based on the 2018 experience, people should be patient. And I think the rest of the market will not be. And looking at when we talk about despair or depression at the bottom, I think it will be people uh, running out of patience and just saying, this is a boring market, I'm leaving. And that will be the, the bottom signal will be people getting bored. I definitely agree about the patience. And depending on where we are and where the influencers are, um, uh, the longer, the more denial there is going to be happening among the influencers, the more denial, the more this is the bottom charts and indicators. There is like thousands of these, like every day I see just new and new ideas of why this is the bottom. The more you will see of that, the more sideways and the longer this is all going to take. I'm not right. so, I'm not saying that this is necessarily impossible that there is going to be some kind of a fast recovery but also uh, we should start as well mentally preparing uh, just in case like I like just Curtis mentioned that there is going to take a year right now like it is going to be th th that this can take it a year it could be yeah, it could be but we will know more like the next month next week even because there is some interesting figures coming out uh, this week as uh, the next week i mean as kurt is mentioned so there should be some volatility next week so um we will be back with a podcast time next sunday uh, we're looking forward and uh, see you later thanks